Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. In a previous video, we got the Yezu FT90 on the bench and played with it a little bit, figured out some things that we didn't know, figured out that it needs some repairs. We'll get into the repairs eventually. I'm, I'm repaired out for the minute. I'm gonna get this thing playing around with some digital radio modes on two meter and make a portable mini man pack. Before we can get into the man pack part of it though, we gotta make sure that all of the stuff works and then get all of the stuff miniaturized and organized and sorted. So let's get to the bench and get started. The secret to getting ahead is getting started. We're gonna do that right now. This is the Yezu FT90, the fabulous micro mobile from Yezu Radio. And we need to get this thing all packed up. So I need to run off of battery power. We're gonna use the BioNO three amp hour battery for this. And we'll figure out how long we can have this thing up and running in a future video, but right now, I just wanna get this thing packed up and figure out how to make it all fit together as a system. And I think we're gonna need a Raspberry Pi Zero. And then I'm gonna use DigiPi from KM6LYW. There'll be a link for that down below in the description. This has got a couple of weird things going on. To make this form factor work, they decided to go with micro USB and I only have a micro USB power cord and I'm gonna need conversions and adapters and nonsense that I'm not happy about. So we'll figure that, we'll figure out a solution for that as we go along as well. But right now, again, get it working, make it happen, get it started. For power from the battery to the Pi Zero, I need a buck converter. And this is the juice box that my buddy Thump made. And there will be links below for this as well. But this is a power pole input. So we plug our battery into it. And then there is a buck converter output and more power poles on the output side so we can power a radio and some other stuff. I need a power cord. This is USB A to USB micro, which is gonna power up the Pi. And there's the light on the Pi working. And then we have our way too big power cable. We'll need to probably cut this down and put power poles directly on this to eliminate all of this because I won't need this in my man pack bag. And then we plug that in and the radio comes on and she's working. So let's get back over to the computer side of things and get this SD card programmed and ready to roll. In order to get DigiPi, we gotta go to digipi.org and gather up some materials. You need to be a member of Craig's Patreon page. I believe it's like any donation amount that you want to give him gets you access to this. So have at it for that. Craig has a fantastic YouTube channel. There will be a link for that in the description as well as the link for the digipi.org website. Download this and save it to a location on your hard disk and then we'll get to burning it to an SD card. My favorite SD card burning tool is Etcher from Bellina. So I'm gonna go and choose flash from file. I'm gonna pick the digipi zip file that I downloaded. Just pick the zip file itself. You don't need to extract the zip file or do anything fancy at all. And it's automatically recognized that there is an image file inside of it. I'm gonna pick my target. The cool thing about Etcher is that it won't let you overwrite your internal hard disk. It's only gonna show you your SD card. So let's take our SD card and put it into our SD card reader slot. There she blows. And I put a 32 gig SD card in. So when this shows up as 31.3 gig, I know it's not my 512 gig internal hard disk. So safety. Hit the checkbox, hit select one, and then hit flash. And then it's gonna want my admin password and we'll be back in a flash. Okay, we are back over here at the micro station with the micro mobile. And I need to take that SD card that we just burnt and insert it into the Raspberry Pi. And I need to plug it in. And we'll see it start blinking and doing its magic. Let's get back over to the computer. When you first start up your DigiPi, it's gonna take a while. It's gonna take a long while, but when it does finally boot up, you will find a new Wi-Fi network on your computer called DigiPi. We're gonna go ahead and connect to that, and we're connected. I've already got this memorized because I've connected to it once before. The password is included in the documentation when you get your DigiPi set up, so don't worry about that. I'm not supposed to share Wi-Fi passwords over the internet because you might be watching this sometime in the future, and sometime in the future, you might figure out that I had a Wi-Fi password sometime in the past and you might try to connect to my network and people get really paranoid about things like that. So that's why I don't share passwords on the network. Any passwords I share in the future are merely a coincidence. Okay, you need to bring up a web browser. HTTP colon slash slash digipi.local will get you there. If you just do digipi.local, sometimes it will try to go over HTTPS because your browser is trying to be helpful and do things you didn't want it to do. And this is not a HTTPS, not an SSL, not a secured website. This is just 
your local network talking to a machine that's going to do ham radio stuff which can't be encrypted anyway now i need to configure this thing and there's this initialize thing down here at the bottom so my browser was trying to be helpful again like i had just mentioned and it put that https in there so i'm going to get rid of that and put it back again stop putting it back there i have had better luck going to the ip address than going to the name maybe it's because i'm running a pi zero zero not a pi zero two w just a pi zero so I'm going to change all of this stuff in the setup in the initialize page and make it my own km9g and then my winlink password we kind of don't need that for what we're doing today but I'm going to go ahead and put mine in anyway and then my APRS password this actually isn't a password this is just a passcode and it's a hash of your call sign mine is 488 that won't work for you you have to go do that and I can't show you that now because I'm not on the internet so we'll show you that in the future. Through the magic of video editing, we're gonna go ahead and put the call sign passcode generator thing in now. There is a website and I will link it in the description down below. It is aprs.do3swww.de. And if you go anywhere and it asks you to create an account or add a password or do anything crazy, you're in the wrong spot because this is just a hash. This is just calculated off of the shape of your call sign. So my call sign is KM9G. I'm gonna do get passcode. And it's going to give me that magic 488 number and that's all it takes that's how i know my numbers so if your call sign was craig's call sign km6 lyw hit get passcode i now have craig's passcode and i'm not going to use his passcode because that only works with his call sign and i'm not going to use his call sign because i have my own but if you picked like a club call kt0ads and you hit get passcode you'd get the ktoads passcode it's just a hash and if you click on this GitHub link here, you can see the source code for how that hash is generated. So security through obscurity, the magic of video editing. My grid square, find my grid square because I am not in my normal home grid square because I don't have a home. All right, my grid square is EM16BK and the latitude longitude is fine for now. This isn't my latitude longitude. This is just, I'm not gonna worry about my GPS location because I'm gonna be gone in a week, so it doesn't matter. But if it did matter, you could put it in. And if it really mattered, you can get a GPS dongle. And we might do that in the future just for fun. Uh, AX25 node pass, I'm not doing any of that. Enable FL rig, I don't need that. Large display, I don't need that. Rig number, my rig number is a digi rig, so we're gonna do RTS. And my device file is TTY USB. And my baud rate, I'm just gonna do 38400. And I'm gonna hit initialize which then wants me to reboot, which is gonna take a while. So we'll come back when that's done. While we set up the DigiPi image, I kind of gave away the fact that I'm gonna be using a DigiRig for this. And this is the first attempt at this. There will probably be many iterations of this over time, but this one is where we are going today is with the DigiRig. There will be a link in the description down below for the DigiRig and for the cable that you need because this radio requires a certain cable in order to make things happen. So this is the DigiRig cable for the FT90 and for a couple of other Yezu radios that have this same style of connection. So you're actually gonna connect over the microphone port. Let's plug that in. And then on the back of the radio, there is a data port, not a data port. On the back of the radio, there is a speaker port for an external speaker. So we'll plug that in. And then this is gonna be an audio only setup. We don't have any cat control for this radio. That's all up to you. And now we've got the audio input and the DigiRig keys push to talk over an RTS signal, which is what we typed in in the config file earlier. Raspberry Pi and DigiRig need to be connected up next. And this is where cabling gets to be fun because the DigiRig currently has a USB-C connection on it, which then plugs into USB-A. And I need to get from USB-A over to the Raspberry Pi. So I have a mess that I need to do and we'll, we'll find some better cables for this in the future. But right now we gotta get ahead. So this is a USB-A connection to mini, mini connection to micro. And then plug that in. And now we have our digital station. Tune the radio to 144.390 for APRS traffic. And let's get back to the computer. We have our software loaded up and we're ready to roll on that. I'm gonna turn on APRS web chat. And then there's a little green light indicating that that is currently on. And I'm gonna hit the web chat link at the bottom to open up the actual web chat software. In order to do APRS, we're gonna to need to talk to somebody. We might as well talk to ourselves. This is the Vero VRN76 and this has a good APRS system built into it. So we're gonna use this to send back and forth to the micro mobile, the AZ 
FT90. I'm gonna type in my call sign. If I look in my radio, let me turn my radio on first. If I look in my radio and I go to general settings and APRS settings, I can see that my call sign is KM9G-12. So that's who I wanna to talk to. KM9G-12, default path. I'm gonna pick from the list. I'm gonna do wide 1-1, wide 2-1. I'm gonna pick up and send hello TO and hit send. Just heard it, and you can see on the screen here that it says KM9G, and I can hear the fan on the FT90 going in the background. So I have successfully received a message. That was pretty simple. And then there is the message. It says hello TO, which is what we typed in on the screen up there. I'm gonna hit the menu button. I'm gonna choose reply, and I'm gonna say, got it. I'm gonna hit okay to send. And we got it. That's awesome. And that should be an acknowledgement. And it says, Act one. Awesome. Now I can talk to myself for the whole rest of the day. Actually, what I can do with this is I can now turn around and make this an APRS Digipeter, or I can make this into a little web chat system on my cell phone and be walking around a ham fest with a 50 watt APRS messaging system where I can talk to everybody else at the ham fest. Or as I'm driving around or parking in the car or doing whatever, I've got a mobile APRS man pack. Well, it doesn't have to be easy to be fun. It doesn't have to be fun to be fun either. We did an amazing amount of connectivity today. We got the micro mobile, the FT90, connected to the digi rig with some special cable that we didn't have to make ourselves, which was nice. Connected to a Raspberry Pi, connected to a buck converter to go from the five volts the Pi needs to the 12 volts the battery supply so I can use the same battery with the micro mobile. It's a lot of stuff. It's a whole mess of wires, so be sure you're subscribed for how we get all of that fixed in an upcoming episode of Micro Mobile on the Air. We're gonna make a man pack out of this thing, and that's what's coming up next. In the meantime, there are links for the Yezu data cable, which works with a whole ton of Yezu radios. There's a big list right there of all the radios that it works with, and that works with the DigiRig, which will work on HF or VHF and connect to your computer for whatever digital mode you happen to be interested in, as long as the radio you're connecting it to out of that list over there is an HF or VHF radio. Winlink or FT8 or APRS or whatever suits your fancy. Stay tuned for part three. It's gonna get interesting. While we're waiting for part three to come out, there's a video right over there, which may or may not be part three. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.